In the name of the one holy and undivided Trinity, please be seated. This liturgical moment is for the wallowers. It is not for celebration or glory or joy, but for those who know pain. For those who are not wallowers, kudos to you for being here. Welcome to the wallow. We are meant to recognize today how much suffering we create in our humanity. How much suffering we have always created in our humanity. All the way back to Isaiah and all the way forward to today, humans have created mess after mess after mess. We cannot look away from suffering, most of us, which is why Jerry Springer ran for so long, why we are hooked on the housewives. Some of us enjoy a good moment of gossip or schadenfreude at someone else's expense, preferring to focus outside of ourselves on the lives and problems of others. But sometimes this can spread suffering too, does it not? Some of us suffered inwardly with shame or guilt from things we have done and cannot let go of, regrets from the past, fear of the future, or grief. Or we suffer at the hand of another through crime or from heartbreak or hatred. Some of us become plagued beyond our control with disordered behaviors and mental health diagnoses that can keep us swirling about unable to stay aligned with God or with ourselves, no matter how we try. This kind of suffering is inherent and torturous, sometimes irreparable. Perhaps this is why God came to live and die as one of us in great pain. God came not with a happy life, but with a saga of deep suffering and violence. God didn't do this to taunt humanity into killing Jesus. God did not come as a suffering servant so that we would have a human sacrifice to give for our sins. God came to draw nearer, to connect us to God's saving nature. God entered in humanity in order to help us understand that even in our deepest pain, even in the kind of excruciating pain that Christ suffered, we, like him, can remain close to God no matter how we suffer or how we cause others to suffer. God will remain with us. And dear Lord, how we suffer. Our suffering, our distinctly human suffering, was created in us. These flaws of humanity were created in us. Take that in for a moment. We were created with flaws. Now, I think that some people would call them choices. (laughs) God would call it free will or agency. My husband would refer to them as opportunities. (laughs) We are wonderfully made, that is true, but we are also not at all flawless. Indeed, we are truly flawful. (laughs) And yet, this is not all that we are. We are not just our mistakes or our sins. We are not our psychoses or our messes or our angers or our anxieties. We are not simply just awful people. How could we be? We are of God. God also created us to desire belonging and connection and love. For these things, we will do nearly anything, even kill. 
Thankfully, God created a safety feature in our survival, spiritual airbags, if you will. It's called salvation. God sent his only son to save us, not only in that moment, but to show us concretely how truly and inherently humanity was already saved. You see, the God of Jews, all the way back to Isaiah, also saved. God, from the beginning, made a way out of no way. God returned God's people, sometimes catastrophically, to belonging. No matter how big the mistake, no matter how lost they were, no matter how golden the calf or how awful the genocide or how deep the flood, God redeemed it. Then one day Jesus showed up on a small weak donkey coming directly in contrast with a king who sat atop a procession of regal and capable camels. And God redeemed all of the horror that happened in Jerusalem. From the triumph of the palm procession to Jesus' trial and his agonizing death among truly awful sentiment and behavior, God won. God showed us that no matter how painful or sinful, how destructive and violent we become, God can still show up and redeem it. The betrayal of Judas and the doubt of Thomas cannot separate us from God. The chained evil of Legion could not, and our flaws and choices and weird wiring cannot either. We do not have a God that punishes We have one that saves. You can count on it. In this passion narrative, it seemed as if God said, go ahead, do your worst. And they did. And still, God turned this unjust crucifixion into something miraculously beautiful, transformative. We walk this same path through Holy Week every single year, not just to be reminded of the hope and the faith and the joy and the alleluia, but also to remember the pain and the suffering that we create, that we carry every day. We come here to this moment to acknowledge the pain and the violence that we are capable of. We come to this moment to recognize the trauma that we afflict on one another, the wars we create in rage, the the famine caused by our greed, and also the shame that we trigger in those we refuse to understand, the denial that we relish because it keeps us from pain. I want to acknowledge that it is incredibly painful to come face to face with our own limitations and human failings. And maybe you didn't even realize that that's what you were coming to church for today. So if the pain of Good Friday is a surprise to you, I am so sorry. And I mean that. And I ask you today to go ahead and come face to face with your flawed humanity. Acknowledge yourself and those things that you engage in that make you like Peter or Thomas or Legion. Sit with your annoyance, with your grief, with the reality that you're limited and incapable of avoiding and causing human suffering. Feel good and sad and sorry about it. This is the place for that. Go ahead and wallow, my loves. It is the day. But then make sure that you come back tomorrow. That way that you see that who you are right here and now today is not who you are in God's eyes. And that by God you will be redeemed. And that one fact 
will come to matter to you more than anything else in the world. You are a child of God, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. And whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. Amen.